welcome to another episode of IEEE Pune sections beyond conversation today we are excited to have prathamesh sauguli an rtl design engineer at amd after completing a silicon design internship at amd he joined full time as an rtl design engineer he also recently finished his masters in electrical engineering from colorado state university with extensive experience in digital electronics and embedded systems prathamesh brings deep insights from the hardware space in this episode we'll explore his journey why he chose electrical engineering and the skills he's developed along the way we'll also discuss amd's position in the tech world and hear his advice for students aspiring to break into this field let's dive into this insightful conversation with prathamesh sauguli So, hey, Rathamish. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, I would like you to introduce yourself to our listeners and audience who may not know your work or what you do. So, please. Sure. Uh, first of all, thank you, Sanjana, for having me here. Uh, so, for everyone, my name is Rathamish Sahule. I completed my undergrad back in 2022 uh, from Pune Institute of Computer Technology in Electronics and Telecommunication. Uh, after that, I moved to US for my master's. I graduated. Uh, from Colorado State University with a degree of Master's in Electrical Engineering and currently I'm working as an RTL Design Engineer at uh, Advanced Micro DSS aka AMD. Yeah, okay, that's great. Great introduction. So, our first question would be why and how did you make the decision to pursue an MS in Electrical Engineering? As you know, it's opposed to the popular notion that software engineering provides more lucrative opportunities in the faster tech industries. Yeah, I would say definitely that was one of the uh, very tempting option. Uh, like coming yeah. from a university like PI City, where everybody around you, despite of com- uh, being from the ENTC background, this uh, everybody around you constantly talks about software, getting into the best ble- possible placement in, uh, in the campus, etc., etc. So yeah, definitely it was tempting, but uh, there were a few big reasons, I would say. First is, uh, I genuinely enjoyed electronics throughout my uh, curriculum of four years. Like whatever different courseworks I had, those were really interesting. And along with it, I would say um, uh, I en- also enrolled to my honors in embedded systems. Uh, so that thing, uh, like whatever battle I had inside me, that sure, like will it, uh, will it be interesting to pursue uh, an additional knowledge uh, in this department, uh, in this uh, particular domain, will it domain. be interesting for me or not? So when I uh, opted for the honors, it uh, definitely cleared my head that, yeah, this is something which is interesting for me and I can go ahead and pursue another degree with it. So uh, in, in bachelor's, you just basically scratch all the subjects uh, at a very top level. So I felt that uh, if I want to, and uh, I was in contact with few people in LinkedIn who were uh, actually working, who were working in the industry. So after talking to them, I realized that I'm at a very low knowledge level or I just touched uh, all the different subjects in that thing. So uh, to pursue a better career in this, uh, and which is very interesting for me as well. So uh, I why not just uh, go and grab like a, uh, study this deeper and get one more degree so yeah i decided to give it give it a shot and it worked out well yeah it actually worked well since you are doing masters now at a well-known university and yes actually because there is a peer pressure kind of thing that one should always go for software because around you there are mostly people who will obviously go for software there are a few people who would actually go in electronics um, knowing that also the fact that my own branch includes electronics and computer engineering, there is also a peer pressure. So yeah. yes, it is actually nice um, knowing that there are people who are actually following the traditional path of electronics. Um, the, furthermore, I would like to ask, like, could you describe the skills and projects that you built during your bachelor's degree? Uh, yeah, definitely. So skills would, again, like I was very interested into the uh, coursework. So I started uh, like digging deeper into that. So in second, third year, we were just uh, getting started with the introduction to program your microcontrollers and etc. 
so along with the coursework i started like uh, learning basics of or do you know how to program how to interface various sensors with it then gradually move to raspberry pi and build few basic projects which you will find everywhere on like uh, yeah. by uh, seeing some youtube videos or going through github so started building those so i would say those would be the skill sets and also the i would say the second uh, another big factor uh, in building your skill set which a lot of people uh, don't pay that much attention is to understand your lab equipment so coming from a, a ba- branch like entc uh, a lot of people uh, just simply ignore the lab sessions which we have during the course of our uh, undergrad for four years uh, but i feel that's very important uh, like knowing the lab equipment uh, maybe just the basic functions like oscilloscope function generators or isi channels these uh, lab equipment these uh, basically provide you the like how the the thing works and whatever you learn conceptually uh, once you have some uh, hands on experience on those uh, in lab uh, i would say that is a very important skill which you should uh, gain and along with it if um, i had a internship uh, in embedded as an embedded system engineer that was also one of the important skill uh, which helped me to build my profile i would say yeah absolutely i do agree because whenever it comes to hardware subject i feel lab sessions are the most important and critical part yes. without it you won't really understand what the theoretical part consists of exactly. yes absolutely um also the next question would be a follow up that how do you think the knowledge that you build then differs from what you have to apply today in the industry as you said that you have previously did an yeah so uh, i would say uh, like a lot of people uh, even i had that misconception that whatever i'm learning or how my college work was um, the industry work will be exactly the same it's not it's totally different but the thing which prepares you for the uh, industry is i would say uh, doing your stuff so uh, same as i said like having the hands on experience in on lab equipment or uh, basically playing around with uh, different tools like raspberry pi or arduino yes. these things uh, prepares you for the industry despite of like uh, industry is uh, definitely is not as same as what you are learning but um, like as you uh, join industry as a new graduate so they they also don't expect the most from you yeah. so uh, i would say that that's like a perfect bridge uh, and which differs is like uh, you learn you just do what you are doing well understand the whole thing and you'll eventually uh, catch up to the what uh, the industry is doing or what the people in the con- uh, your company are doing Uh, yeah absolutely it's a great answer because yes many of us even right now who are students are kind of in the ambiguity that what actual work will be because every test or assessment will need you to code or have some theoretical knowledge of yeah. any domain that you are doing so again uh, as you said that you are rtl design engineer right now so yeah. what does it mean to be a rtl design engineer or silicon design engineer and what is like the main difference between the big question so uh i would say silicon design when you say silicon design engineer it's a very wide umbrella so if i have to uh make it analogous to software industry the silicon design engineering would be same as software development engineering both are it so uh it's it's a very wide umbrella uh under the all the roles in a, any uh silicon design company they come you can categorize those as a silicon design engineer. so uh, talking specifically about rtl design engineering rtl designing it's the first part of building any chip so rtl stands for register transfer uh, logic so uh, in that level so m- what an rtl engineer do is uh, he or she uh, they uh, understand the what we expect from the chip at the end and based on that we have to write the uh, hardware uh, write all our expectations in the hardware descriptive language like very log and system vendor so uh, the main role would be of an rtl designer would be to just uh, i would say plan the whole chip and 
uh, start like write it down in a, a hardware descriptive level and send it to the physical design level so that the people can place and route the things. So RTL design uh, helps you to uh, basically route the whole chip basically uh, from the base and uh, like that's that's the first step. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, great. Um, also, what are some typical roles offered in the hardware industry for electronics or electrical grads and what skill sets should students be focusing on right now? Okay. So, uh, I would say, uh, as I mentioned, that's, there's a very wide umbrella of the uh, roles which you can uh, classify in, uh, in silicon design engineering. So, a lot of people don't know is that uh, same as the software industry, even hardware industry has front end and back end. So for the, in front end development, you get the roles like RTL design or uh, design verification. And after doing this uh, in the back end, the your roles would be uh, something like um, a physical design engineering or a post silicon validation engineering. So uh, even you can further divide them them into pre silicon and post silicon. So pre-silicon is something where you uh, plan your whole chip, uh, make a layout of it, you place and route in uh, the signal in, uh, in a given chip. So you have to make sure the signal travels the minimum paths to avoid any delays and everything. Uh, this is everything is pre-silicon and most of the... Uh, so in hardware industry, we can uh, mainly divide into two different industries. One is like semi semiconductor manufacturing and the embedded industry like there are other parts as well like if you go if you want to go to, into power electronics etc etc but i'll mainly talk about the uh, silicon industry where i am working on so uh, basically a lot of people don't know that uh, but in silicon industry also there are uh, there is front end and there is back end so front end generally requires the work what i do that is rtl design and de uh, design verification and in the back end uh, involves basically uh, the floor planning of the chip uh, where you have to make a physical design of a chip and then uh, there's a thing called place and route where you have to place the various uh, components on a chip and how you can route a signal through it and your ultimate goal is to uh, so that the signal will take the minimum path to avoid the delay. Uh, these roles are further divided into uh, pre-silicon and post-silicon roles. So in pre-silicon, uh, like as the name suggests, it is before uh, we make the actual silicon, like the uh, roles like RTL design, design verification, uh, DFT engineer, or a physical design engineer, etc., etc. And once most of the semiconductor manufacturer, uh, manufacturers use a third-party vendor to... Uh, print out the chips and once uh, we get those uh, a few prototype chips back uh, there's a validation team which actually puts those chips and in, uh, into the circuit or into the dashboard and do various measurements and gives the report accordingly so yeah uh, there are validation roles in post silicon as well that's that's a great answer because even I was confused that what exactly are some roles that are offered because yes we know there is like hardware designing part or also software but now I got like clear idea so um, following up that question what are some skill set should students be focusing on to get hired in such roles of hardware or in the software of electronics domain yeah, yeah. what is your personal growth journey throughout your masters and right now you're working in the company so what are some tips or experiences that you face that have shaped you into what you are yeah that question so uh, I would say personal growth like I was a very underconfident guy before going to the masters I I didn't got my dream college uh while going to US so the like when I moved to US there was a huge disappointment disappointment on myself that I didn't get that college but uh worked the way through it so uh, I uh I wanted to get up so basically what I said uh, again uh, focusing on that thing is uh, on second semester I wanted to get a teacher's assistantship Again, I emailed all the professors uh, possible and showed them my uh, career, uh, my resume, or uh, expressed like what I, what expertise I can bring it on uh, if I am assisting them. And eventually, I got one. And uh, same goes with my getting my internship or getting a full time. 
uh so the in personal growth yeah first thing is never give up uh, like it's, it's your probability of getting a success is definitely very low just keep trying don't give up and then uh like uh, i would say try all the possible ways you can uh to to reach to your goal uh so you it, uh, it can be anything so uh, in my case it was getting a job or getting an internship so for that i attended a lot of uh, career fairs uh, met a lot of people online uh, i had a goal that every uh, week i should at least call dm 20 to 30 people and i uh, some weeks i was i was able to do that other weeks it wasn't happening but still uh, i was trying to be as consistent as pos- as possible and it like you might do 100 cold dms you might not get a reply but once you get that one reply that can be game changing so uh, in personal growth uh, i feel that the important thing that to never give up and just to work on it until you get the success it's it's not the easy thing to get yeah yeah that's a great question also like i saw your post regarding um challenging job market in the us today and how you managed to secure multiple top internships despite it could you tell us what your journey looked like in context of job search like yes you did cold emails but what are some aspects that you know followed up with that yeah there's an so uh, for me uh, it was like uh, one of the most scariest thing after going to us that uh, i was listening a lot of people was getting laid off and everything in in that market entering uh, as a person who had zero job experience and who is going to start so it was definitely very scary uh but yeah like uh the journey was very hard like i had to uh, for my internship i did more than 600 applications and more than 200 cold emails and yeah that was crazy and sometimes it can get very demotivating as well like i remember a few mornings i woke up with like 20 30 rejections mail uh in, in a single go so that's definitely uh, hurtful but yeah again the key is to keep going um then i was keeping iterating my resumes uh getting my resumes reviewed by multiple hrs uh talking with multiple seniors talking with multiple uh industry experts that what i can add or what i can remove you are having different iterations uh, having different versions of resume so like if a particular job is uh, more aligned to my this resume so tailoring more the resume more towards job and applying uh, that was the journey again like after that also like after doing 600 applications i only got three callbacks and the so uh, in in the in those three also the first one i failed miserably and that was also one big backlash and then uh, just learning from your mistakes like in first interview whatever mistakes i did uh, just learning from them and then iterating and just getting it better uh, until you reach to the goal this will be my journey and i feel if so, you are someone who are looking to get a job you uh, like focus more my advice would be focus more on getting an internship that helps you a lot while getting a full time like uh, having an internship gives you a, a really a good perspective about the industry or uh, especially for someone who doesn't had any previous experience that was a really good experience uh, to have the internship and uh, so uh, and also having an internship from a good brand really elevates your resume and that eventually helped me to get my full time so i think so uh, i would say whatever uh, like uh, i'm talking about my perspective where when i did my undergrad from pune university so uh, whatever course works we had during the undergrad so basically you'll have analog communication digital communication digital electronics and uh, signals and system all this subject if you just understand like the basic working phenomenon of all this subject that is a, a i would say a enough skill to start with the job so let's say my role for example rtl design so it generally requires a clear cut knowledge of all the digital electronics so it, it it includes all the basics uh, fundamentals like a flip flop how does it work a latch like like from the basic 
till then you can add it like uh, what is the setup time for time then uh, what is that thing so uh, i feel uh, just doing your course work right and knowing those thing it is more than sufficient and th that would be the first layer and after that if you uh, uh, after doing all these things you will get an idea that which area you want to work on okay yeah digital electronics is something which i i can work in so you can start uh, learning about verilog system verilog and go into roles like uh, rdl design or design verification okay uh, communication is something which is uh, communication digital communication or signal cell system this is something uh, which is which uh, which is interesting for me then you can pursue the roles like service engineer where you have to think that how uh, a signal will travel through the chip and uh, the, you have to travel it with the minimum loss possible uh, so um, the skill set would be just to, the first level is just to go through all your coursework finalize on one thing and once you finalize then uh, digging deeper into it and uh, uh, like going one level above would be my suggestion oh okay okay so yeah what i got from this is like one should always focus on your co course work or subject because basic starts yep. from there right so yes yeah. um all right yeah like that's great answer um another question would be since you are, you did your masters in colorado state university what are your biggest learnings during your masters degree both like inside and outside of the university okay uh so i would say inside the university is uh giving 100% what you are doing so you might be doing a basic coursework or a basic assignment or it might be a your semester long project the key is to understand each and every part of it and give you a 100% and not just completing it for the sake of completion uh i observe a lot of people do this mistake like they just complete for the sake of uh, uh, getting a certification or having a project in your resume but uh as i observed the when a industry hires a new grad new college grad they don't expect you to know each and everything of the industry that they don't expect you that you can you will be able to solve the higher level problem they just want whatever you are doing you are better in that so all the interview experiences i had i learned that, uh, it all comes down to they ask me oh okay so you uh, took this course work what you learned on this or if you did this project in this particular course work okay so why you use this tool not that tool so in this tool what configuration you use what libraries you use you use so basically it comes down to the thing that whatever you are doing do it with your 100% uh try to go as deep as you can try to uh, understand that thing fully that would be my learning inside the university and uh i would say outside the university uh my learning would be to just ask whatever you want you want you want a referral you want a job whatever it is don't fear don't fear to ask cause if you ask the probability of getting a no answer is 50% if you don't ask it's 100% so i feel asking and like i i landed into one uh interview without even submitting my resume cause i just paid uh i was doing a lot of cold dms to a lot of people from that camp so that would be my uh, learning outside university just ask don't forget don't uh, get afraid to ask people about anything you want there are people out there to help you yeah so the next question would be the harder tech space is brimming right with the innovation today and even in india right now there is many initiatives being taken for hardware hardware industries of chip manufacturing and everything so uh, owing to the ever increasing competition in the chip manufacturing business what are some you know challenges or problems in hardware industry designing that you find most interesting uh yeah good question so uh talking about the industry itself uh, it's going through a lot right now uh being uh, like after the pandemic uh being the of the shortage of the uh, shortage in the semiconductor industry yeah. uh, from there till the nvidia bounce back bounce back we saw everything so i feel currently this is one of the most lucrative industry the reason being as the ai is increasing you need some solid hardware so that your ai can perform efficiently generate 
the answers quickly and uh, so uh, we, we are seeing the results in nvidia stocks already so uh, i feel the uh, challenges uh, would be uh, in the recent times we are hitting the plateau of the performance so uh, the infamous moore's law is kind of getting ba backlash that it's not uh, running up to the uh, how the dr moore presented it uh but the most important challenge would be the same that keeping up with the uh, other uh, advancements into that uh so for that there are like a lot of research going on um in this industry uh recently georgia tech just invented uh, a thing where we can use graphene as a semiconductor so uh with the silicon as we are hitting the boundaries we have to look further for other elements or in 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 silicon only if we can do something to increase the area and fit as many as more transistors uh, to get the maximum performance out of it i think that's a really big challenge right now yeah i i feel the same because the thing is um even in india you may see like front end engineer in software that are who are focusing on computer science and everything but you would rarely see a person who is into core domain of it exists yes. so there is like initiative going on in india that there will be a, approximately more than 100 companies or startups who are be who are going to focus on semiconductor as a business yeah definitely i, I agree like what uh, currently us market is going through lot of things are like uh, as the workload is increasing and uh, whatever happened with the software industry yeah. that the workload trickled down to india and india became a software hub I feel the similar thing, uh, kind of thing, can happen in India. A lot of big companies like AMD, Synopsys, Micron, Nvidia are increasing their workforce in India, and that's a really good thing for a, a Indian a semiconductor market. Definitely. Yes. 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 Definitely. So, um, can you tell me about a typical day in your life as an RTL design engineer? Hmm. Sure. so generally the work hours of rtl design engineer are uh, as regular as 9 to 5 and this job is uh, something which you can do hybrid or uh, like or uh, there is no restriction in this job and so the typical day would be so uh, like to develop an rtl so uh, as i mentioned initially the rtl is like the basic first step of a chip development so sometimes you have to talk to a vendor or a uh, talk to a uh, people in the industry that uh, or, or with the higher management that how we need the next ship how we design it how we want to design it so uh, the most basic part would be obviously the, to design the rtl then the second uh, the an other work in uh, that an rtl design engineer to is to like uh, once your rtl design is complete Uh, we forward it to a dv team that is design verification so the dv team uh, verifies all the uh, designs and are, are those uh, fine and like so we have to deal with the dv team they are having some issue or if they suggest some changes into that so we have to make those changes accordingly after that after design verification it goes to the physical design team where they have to lay out all the uh, all the flops and all the components as we mentioned in our code that they have to uh, lay out and then we have to sync up with the physical design team to make it uh, to so that the both things would be same and give the maximum possible output for us so that's how a uh, rtl design is like. interesting to me um, yeah so also as you said that rtl design engineer is a front end part right and yeah. electronics do it so what are uh, what are some tech stacks do you do use like on a daily basis Uh, so daily basis our tech uh, the mo our most of work uh, happens in system very log in very log and uh, then a few scripts here and there so scripts are generally uh, either in python or perl based on which team you work on and then tickle scripts are generally used to uh, so a uh, what lot of our uh, uh, softwares which uh, gives out the the log of a uh, run in a terms of tickle scripts so you sh uh, you should have the knowledge of tickle as well uh, and then uh, some uh, basic bash scripts here and there to run few commands 
yeah okay okay great um also coming up next question what do you think makes amd one of the best players in the industry right now and like how do you how does amd stand out from the other competitors oh uh, yeah definitely amd is like one of the most emerging company i would say um under the leadership of our ceo dr lisa so who joined uh, uh as a ceo in 2014 at that time the market cap of amd was hardly 1 one and 1/2 billion dollar from there till today which is more than 300 billion dollars like 300 times growth it's insane and it was like the the pc market the windows pc market was very heavily dominated by intel going into that territory and grabbing 40 plus percentage of uh, market share was a really commendable thing and currently also amd is doing really good in the data centers chips and uh, they are trying to uh, the like Uh, add the AI accelerators and AI powering so that the uh, for for getting the better data solutions, AMD recently acquired few uh, AI companies to uh, so that they can accelerate these things. So I feel yeah, definitely the company has a really bright future and it's in upward trajectory and this trajectory will go on for quite some time now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great because AMD we know every other laptop we see uh, there is an AMD Ryzen in it. So um other than that um what are some things or key aspects do you think you could have done differently in your bachelor's that could have aided you in the masters uh, definitely i i feel uh, like doing more hands on work would have definitely helped me more uh, i had one internship in the master uh, in my bachelor's and i feel uh, having multiple in, uh, internships or even like um doing projects on various different domains would have definitely helped me more so for me uh, my uh, my internship was in embedded systems and when, even uh, when i came here for my masters uh, my main focus was embedded but after uh, coming here and doing my projects i uh, realized that silicon design is something which is more interesting for me and then i changed midway so i feel if i would have done this research or did more uh, deep into these things during my bachelor's i would have had a clear idea and some more early mores advantage would, uh, would which would have helped me to towards my masters yeah so um, following up with that question um what is your advice for the people or students who are determined to do their career in electronics or electrical domain uh i feel as as we discussed this is one of the like highly growing market and it's just going to go on a upward trajectory from now so i feel this is a really good time to think about it a lot of people underestimate this thing especially in india like a uh, lot of people are like more restricted towards software thing so i feel uh, starting uh, like base from basics or exploring uh, like playing around with the different uh, things in electronics would be a really good solution and again like uh, reaching out to the people from the particular industry let's say if you like one part now thankfully we have tools like linkedin where we can reach out to multiple people and uh, we can ask like what's going on in the industry and uh, something like that that would be a really good thing i would say to start or kick start your career even if you are not uh, familiar with that thing connecting to these people would give you a better insight and that can clear up your head that whether you want to go here or not and uh, then ac- accordingly you can choose your domain and uh, inside the electronics and mm, you can work along with it i i feel it's pretty interesting everybody should give it try try for this yeah yeah people people are usually scared when it comes to hardware they are like okay yep. we have to actually build something yes. hard that to physically so it is it comes like it that but yeah it's no it's the, yeah. the current carry in micro micro amps nothing is going to happen to you it's fun is also like teachers whenever you do practicals it's like do not burn something do not burn the register or something yeah. so i feel like that is also one aspect but yeah that's why i feel it is important for any people any person or student who wants to be in that domain to search and do their ground work but yeah thank you thank you so much for um doing this interview prathamish it was very insightful 
for someone who is also comes from like software and hardware a sandwich course it is really great to have an insight from hardware as well um other than that it was really insightful and i'm very very thankful for that you had that um thought on you that okay we have to share this like okay we reached out and now we are having this podcast so thank you so much yeah thank you so much for having me i've following you, your podcast since a while and it's it's amazing to be here thank you for having me and that brings us to the end of this insightful episode a huge thanks to prathamesh for taking the time to share his journey and expertise his experiences in hardware industry and his path from intern to the rtl design engineer at amd have truly been inspiring if you found this conversation valuable be sure to subscribe for more thought provoking discussions with industry leaders thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next episode of beyond conversations